This program does not constitute an endorsement by the United States Army or the Department of Defense. Welcome, welcome. Good morning, good morning, good morning. <laughs> welcome to the show, SFL Live. My name is Lieutenant Colonel Ismael Ortiz Anand. I am the Employment Director for Soldier for Life. You're probably uh, asking yourself, what is SFL Live? So this is a new platform to communicate with you. I will want to share what different organizations are doing for veterans, soldiers, spouses, and the families. But before we continue, let us know where are you listening from. If you write it down in the chat, we're going to be able to post it in the on, on the chat. Okay, so grab a cup of coffee. Oh, I got my cup of coffee here. So grab your cup of coffee, sit back, relax, and enjoy this program. Today we're gonna we have a fantastic job. We're gonna honor today our military spouses. Sometimes as a as as a military, we take our spouse's support for granted. Yet sometimes their work goes unnoticed, and it's unnoticed the monumental work that our spouses do for us so we can accomplish our mission. I encourage you, if you are military, write down a, a word of appreciation. Um, uh, for you, for your spouse, say, "Hey, thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate what you're doing for me." So this is a way for us to, for to express our gratitude to our spouses. I'm I'm excited. If you see me like uh, 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 <laughs> I'm really excited. This is this is a uh, this is amazing. Today we have a fantastic program. Today we are going to talk about career opportunities. Sometimes our, our spouses uh, PCA with us and they have to leave or quit their their job. I see a person here. Oh, my goodness. Uh, hi, Karen. She's from Hawaii. It's 4 a.m. there. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> That's so good. Um, so, so the spouses, sometimes they have to PCA. They have to move with us. And for that reason, we create... Um, if you can see there, we have the Military Spouse Virtual Career Fair. And sometimes the spouses, they need to go on a new adventure. And it, when they go to the new place, they need to find a new job. So we, for this, so we are creating this for the spouses so you can have opportunities to find jobs uh, when you are. For that matter, I want to introduce you our guest, Chris Newsom from Recruit Military. And he will be uh, talking to us about the military spouse virtual career. Chris, welcome to our show. But before I begin, I would like to say that this program started as a strategy to disseminate the program. It's something that was sound like a strategy. It became now uh, something formal for SFL Life, for Soldier for Life. So welcome. Thank you so much for having me on the show today, Colonel Ortiz. So before where you are, where you are right now, I am in not so sunny Cincinnati, Ohio. Right. Now. Oh, yeah. From Ohio. That's a, yep. that's the greatest of the Internet and the technology that we're having. But before we go into our topic, I would like you to share who you are and what you do in recruit military. Sure. Thank you. Um, so I am an army veteran myself. I'm a soldier for life. I transitioned from Fort Bragg, not to date myself 15 years ago. Um, I was a short timer. I transitioned as a, as a junior non-commissioned officer, as an E5 sergeant. And uh, upon transitioning, coming back to my home of record, pursuing higher education and um, fast forward, maybe two, three years after I transitioned, I, I happened to stumble into recruit military as fate would have it. It, uh, it's, it's 20 minutes from my front door as far as headquarters goes. So I had some fellow veteran friends that were working there, encouraged me to come and check out the mission. I did fell in love with it. And at this point now, 
myself and my team manage our Department of Defense programs and general uh, job seeker aggregation strategy. So it's our job to make sure that the men and women in uniform, their, their families, spouses are aware of the wealth of opportunities that are at their fingertips, the countless employers that are uh, quite literally starving for their talent um, to, to make sure that we can bridge the gap between these two parties. Okay, that's a, you were talking about employers uh, needing the, the talent. So why we're doing this fair? So, you know, there's, uh, there's a lot of different reasons. I won't air them all, but um, primarily, I, I think we need to appreciate the fact that the spouse has a very different experience than their significant other that's in uniform. They do have to, you know, frequently move via PCS, as you mentioned on the front end. They have to leave their jobs. Most opportunities have not been something that they can pack and take with them. So what we want to do is, is kind of streamline that connection and bring to the fold only those organizations that uh, that understand the immense value that stems from the military spouse community, and to uh, and to make sure that we can bridge some of those gaps, bring some of those remote opportunities to the forefront. You know, so many opportunities these days have been converted to remote opportunities. So it allows you know the military spouses to kind of take those opportunities with them, regardless of where they're going, if they're going a CONUS back to the stateside. Um, so we want to do an event that's that's just for our military spouse community as a way to not just say thank you, but as a means to um, mitigate you know the the unemployment rate on that side of the house. It can be it can be very high sometimes. So um, yeah, just bridging the parties together uh, so that so that these men and women have a, a great opportunity to talk with companies that specifically understand them and want to hire them. Yeah, you know what? Um, and the, you brought something very uh, call my attention. Is the during the COVID there was a lot of employment. I witnessed soldiers whose income was affected because the spouse was the breadwinner, uh, and the household income decreased during the COVID to the loss of job, and also uh, the lack for uh, child care, for example. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you think about it, you know, in, in many cases, at least temporarily, if not elongated, you're eliminating, you know, 50% of the household income. If you have a dual household income and all of a sudden you have to, uh, you know, consolidate to a single household income, you have to make very real lifestyle changes and everything gets just a little bit more complicated. So for spouses, you know, as, as daycare can be elusive in some cases, you know, being able to have flexible work opportunities that really fit their lifestyle, uh, that's kind of the way of the future these days. Yes, it is true. You know, the wives are as spouses, they are they are highly educated, they are adaptable. They have some skills that the employers need some uh, nowadays. They are adaptable. They imagine they can do planning in the short time, they can move uh in, in four week notice, and they are financially savvy. All joking aside, have you ever seen someone pitch a penny better than a military spouse? <laughs> For example, my husband. He saved every penny, every dollar that he can. So he handled the budget. He paid the bill, revised budget, saved for unexpected trips across the country, talked to the band, and did I mention budget? He in charge of the budget. So <laughs> spouses, they are, uh, they are, they are the skills help the organization today, and they they enhance the organization with the skills. Now, Chris, I have a question. How does being a mom or a dad staying home with kids in pit parent job search? at the time they're trying to find a work? It's inherently complicated. You're, you're doing a balancing act. You know, as you mentioned, you have an incredibly diverse, highly educated, highly skilled group of, of folks that are a part of the military community that are generally underserved and kind of underrepresented in some cases. So even when you get to the point where you can settle long enough to start your career hunt, if you do have kids, if you are um, holding the fort down, so to speak, you know, that that spouse really is the glue uh, to the family unit while the significant other is deployed, PCSing, TDY, you know, whatever the case might be, you, you know, you still have a lot of work to do at home and that's what these folks do. So, um, you know, again, being able to offer them digital solutions uh, as, as kind of a, not a substitute, but an alternative option to needing to go door to door knocking and answering help wanted ads, you know, having a virtual environment that again, can be flexible to your lifestyle, to your timing, this particular event that we're hosting together, it's gonna be a solid four hours. If you can carve out, 
even a single hour out of that four hour block, you know, it's, it's going to be worth your time, but we need to make sure that we're bringing a diverse array of opportunities to be able to accommodate the lifestyle of the modern day military spouse. Yeah, you, you're right. And also I, um, we have just one minute, 20 seconds left, but I would like to take this moment. The next segment, we're going to talk about how to get into the, the recruiting link and how to get, uh, what to expect. But I would like to mention that Veronica is an example of those spouses, the, the, um, the working, the working for recruit military. And I want to show because last two weeks she was in, where she was last two weeks. She was in Morocco. So my colleague Veronica is a military spouse. Yep. She's stationed in, <laughs> yep. she's in Germany. Uh, she likes to travel and being able to have a remote work opportunity, uh, grants her that freedom, you know, to continue to live her life the way that she wants to, uh, to, to be able to make impact through the meaningful work that she does. You know, these, these, these are very, you know, realistic, you know, options for folks. So uh, the challenge would be don't, don't settle for a job or a career if you're not happy there. There are options. Okay, so we're going to go on a break right now. And after the break, we're going to get right back. If you are an active duty, reserve, or National Guard military spouse, we want to thank you for your dedication and support. In the U.S. Army, we are committed to your professional and personal development. That's why we want to invite you to the Military Spouse Virtual Fair on May 5th, 2022, from 11 o'clock a.m. to 3 o'clock p.m. You will learn strategies to help you get a job, along with the opportunity to be interviewed live by one of the company representatives looking for employees at this fair. Do not miss this opportunity. There are positions to work remotely and face-to-face -face in the United States and Europe. Mark your calendar for the Military Spouse Virtual Fair on May 5th. Sponsored by Recruit Military and U.S. Army Soldier for Life. Welcome, welcome to SFL Life. And this today, we're doing a unique program dedicated to the military spouse for those who have just turned in now. We were talking about Veronica Sarantes. She worked for Recruit Military. She's a military spouse and she was in Morocco. So we have Veronica here. Veronica, how are you doing? Hi, everyone. Thank you for having me today. Um, I really appreciate this opportunity, Colonel Ortiz Rivera. Thank you. I just want to say that Veronica will be on the next episode on 27 April. So I just want to uh, get the chance to, to talk to her. Where, you are right now in Germany, right? Correct. I am located in Grafenbier, Germany, and I've been a military spouse for 21 years and relocated seven different times. <laughs> oh, wow. So what time is it now? It is uh, 4.13 p.m. Oh, so you are heading. The, you're talking from the future. I am. <laughs> so here in um, in uh, in Virginia, it's raining. Uh, how it is there, Chris? Uh, raining as well in Ohio. And in Germany? It's snowing. Oh, oh my goodness, it's cold. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Veronica, we will get back with you uh, later. Thank you. Sounds great. Thank you. Uh, Chris, I want you to walk uh, the audience. Uh, so how they, they go, where they need to go, and what they can expect. Uh, yeah. Great question. Okay. So, um, and this is for the entire audience, if there's soldiers listening as well. Um, this ecosystem is for the military community at large. So um, for this particular event, if you're a military spouse and you're trying to find um, the, the easiest route to registration, one, you can always go to Google type in recruit military um, spouse. And uh, you know the search engine optimization is going to bring the event up to the top of the pile. But if you go through organic search, go to recruitmilitary.com. Um, there's a fork in the road. You identify as a job seeker or an employer. Obviously, we're talking about being a job seeker in this context. So we select, I am a job seeker. It's going to push you here. You can see you can start to perform a job search. This is an alternative job board um, that, that is separate but tied to the event. Um, and if you scroll right under the stats bar, you'll see find a hiring event near you. We'll simply select that. It'll launch a new tab. 
and it'll bring up our events. You can see that this one has recognized um, that, that I'm interested in this event, but if we wanted to see all events, we simply click that tab and it brings down the chronological order of all the events. And if we go down here to, the, to May 5th, we can see our male spouse event once again. So we select that event, we select the registration process, and then the first page you're going to see is actually um, the lineup of the organizations that are going to be attending. So for those of you that may want to understand who's going to be there, what are they hiring for, this is where you find it. You'll see it initially through the registration process. And then once you're registered, you're going to be sent reminders uh, and, and updates of new organizations that are going to be in attendance. Um, so we're doing this event in conjunction with DAV. And, uh, and, and, and Soldier for Life, obviously. But you can see here we have First Command Financial Services, uh, Advanced Auto Parts, Liberty Mutual. We can see the position types. We can see the areas that they're hiring for. And you can see the locations. Some of these are going to have very physical locations. Some of these are going to be uh, nation or even global uh, opportunities. And many of these are going to be remote work opportunities. So um, with that, I digress. We go to the registration button here. Once again, there's a couple registration buttons to, to click through. But once you get to that point, it's going to ask you to, to simply register as an individual unless you have attended one of our events before. If you have attended a recruit military event before, uh, a virtual event in particular, you should still have your credentials. But assuming you don't, you select register as an individual. And it's simply going to ask a couple baseline questions to, for you to create um, your initial profile. So you'll complete all this information. You'll register, that will have you officially registered for this event. Now you're going to be invited to, um, to add additional information. We wanna know future work interests, past work experience, education. There's a handful of additional data points and we wanna encourage you to fill that out as completely as possible because keep in mind these recruiters, these employers that are going to be participating in this event want to see who you are. When they engage with you in the chat, they wanna be able to bounce over and see your profile. So the registration process is is, is pretty easy, sir. Okay, I have a question. When a person uh, fill their profile, right? And do they, all the employers that uh, recruit military has, they can see their profile before yes. the conference, the conference yes. the fair? Yes, absolutely. And that, that's a great question and a great point here because this gives recruiters the opportunity to see you before actually meeting you. And it gives you an opportunity to see them before meeting them. You can even apply to some of their positions. So if you've never navigated or, or attended a virtual career fair before, it's not terribly unlike physical events, but um, you want to do a little bit of homework on the front end. If you can uh, identify organizations, opportunities that you want to you know, uh, apply to now, do that. Do that so that you can have a advanced conversation when you actually connect with that recruiter. Otherwise, it, it's kind of like speed dating. You know, you as a job seeker give your 30 second elevator pitch. That company essentially does the same, giving you the overview of the organization and the opportunity. Um, so the more that you can do on the front end, the more of a meaningful conversation you'll actually have day of. Yeah. Also, we have uh, we're going to stop right now because we have a, a, a break in the next segment. We're going to talk about what to expect there. And then we're going to get back with Veronica Sarantes. We're going to talk about the event bright and the training opportunity for the spouses. We'll be right back. If you are an active duty reserve or National Guard military spouse, we want to thank you for your dedication and support. In the U.S. Army, we are committed to your professional and personal development. That's why we want to invite you to the Military Spouse Virtual Fair on May 5th, 2022, from 11 o'clock a.m. to 3 o'clock p.m. You will learn strategies to help you get a job, along with the opportunity to be interviewed live by one of the company representatives looking for employees at this fair. Do not miss this opportunity. There are positions to work remotely and face-to-face -face in the United States and Europe. Mark your calendar for the Military Spouse Virtual Fair on May 5th. Sponsored by Recruit Military and U.S. Army Soldier for Life. Welcome back to SFL Live. We're launching this unique program dedicated to our military spouses for those who have just tuned in. For the next 10 minutes, 
we're going to talk and we're going to share when you click the link and when you go through the link, what are you going to expect? And then we're going to talk to Veronica Cervantes. She's a military spouse that works for Recruit Military about the event right opportunity. So we were talking, uh, some of the questions that we have um, when we were briefing before is, is um, somehow hard to understand this. Where you, let me get back. We're used to do fairs in person. So when we do virtual fairs, we don't know what to expect. Can you guide us through the process, Chris? Yes, absolutely. So as, as we just showed you in the previous segment, um, the actual registration process is intuitive. It's fill in the blanks. It may take you 10 minutes or so to fully robustly complete that, um, that professional profile. But again, you want to give as much information as possible so that these recruiters understand who you are. Once you're actually registered, um, you're going to be guided. You're going to be entered into a nurturing campaign where we will send you regular updates and reminders, best practices. We're going to give you guidance as to how to navigate this event. Um, there are also two pre-event training sessions that we're going to be doing in conjunction with MSEP, Military Spouse Employment Partnership. So um, if if you can mark your calendars, if we can add the links into the chat here, we have one session that's taking place on the 21st of this month and one session that's taking place on the 28th. So we have two weeks and one week prior to the actual event. And during these events, we're going to give you guidance uh, as far as how to overcome objections, you know, on, uh, uh, you know, when it when it comes to being considered as a candidate, um, understanding how to navigate the question, you know, associated with frequent job changes or gaps in work history, you know, because that's very common with military spouses because of PCS moves and the inconsistency of where they reside. So we're going to give you the guidance that you need to make sure that you can navigate those questions, those conversations, uh, ensure that your resume is is positioned as, as well as possible to be effective when you attend this event. Um, and then on the back end of those training sessions, we're also going to give you a literal dry run of the, uh, of the virtual environment itself, showing you profile build, resume uh, upload, all that good stuff, which we don't really have time for today, but we can look um, essentially at the aesthetics of the event. So once you log in, once you are registered for this event, you're going to have an event dashboard that's going to show you the events that you're registered for. Now you can see here, I have, I have two other army centric events and we're just gonna look through these for the sake of demonstration purposes. So if we go to join event, it truly is as simple as that. Nobody needs to download anything. Everything is browser based. So as long as you have a device and connection to the internet. It can be your smartphone. It can be your tablet. You can do all of this via uh, a, a smart device if if you're not able to use a laptop or a desktop. Chris, um, I'm sorry to yes, interrupt sir. you. Do the spouses need to have camera or microphones? Great question. Um, you do not need to. If you oh. have them, I would encourage you to understand how to operate them simply because you do have the opportunity to connect audibly as well as visually. There are um, face-to-face uh, camera interactions that you can have. You're essentially going to enter into these uh, into these various organization rooms. You will engage them in a, either a group chat or a private chat. And once you're within that private chat, you can have a video conference. You know, So for anybody that's used to using Zoom or Teams, anything like that, same level of functionality, but you do not need it in order to be successful at this event. Again, profile completion and simple participation is, is the biggest and best thing that you can do to be effective and to be visible. So uh, here you can see we have our, uh, our, our our title sponsor, DAV. Let's say we wanted to enter their room and have a conversation with them. It is as simple as just clicking the button. Join the room. You can see here this event is not live right now, so there's no engagement, no conversations going on. But essentially, you can enter uh, a conversation in the main chat room. You can see here you have the ability to share your screen, share a document, your camera, your microphone. Oh, Again, wow. You don't need it, but it is there if and when you do need it. Uh, and when you see a representative, you can simply engage via private chat and you're going to be entered into a queue. You have to keep in mind there may be other individuals that are in line to talk with that representative. It just depends on what time uh, of the event you jump into and how busy it is at that time. So let's say you enter into that queue. Um, 
you don't necessarily want to sit there and wait 10 minutes, 15 minutes for your turn. So you can continue to engage with other entities within the uh, within the virtual environment. Let's say I also wanted to talk to uh, to, to TAP. I wanted to talk to some TAP folks because I needed some general guidance. Um, I can enter that room as well. And you can see here, I can actually toggle back and forth between the rooms. And I believe you have the ability to have as many as five rooms open. So you don't want too many because it gets busy. You get dings every time there's a notification. So keep it to a, a moderate uh, amount that you have open at any given time, just so you're not distracted. But you can bounce back and forth from room to room, engage with these organizations, view their collateral, view their job postings, start that application process while you're in the queue. Um, so that once again, once you have that that opportunity to have the conversation, it's a meaningful conversation. Then I, I have a question. Do they need to have the whole time be there in the in the conference? Another great question. Um, no, you don't. We understand that there are limitations relative to your availability time-wise. We understand some of you are a CONUS, like very much like Veronica. It's after 4 p.m. her time right now. So for an event that runs from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we understand that may not be perfect. Please keep in mind it's it's almost impossible to keep every time zone um, you know perfectly happy with with a four hour window like this. So um, we have four hours. If you can carve out the time, if you can stay up late or wake up a little bit early to participate, we strongly encourage you to do so. If you only have 30 minutes, if you only have one hour, that's okay. Again, having that profile completed and your resume within the ecosystem itself is a great way to leave your fingerprint and let them know that you're there and that you're available, even if you don't get the opportunity to engage face-to-face. -face. Question, then, just because we, before we go to Veronica, um, so a person goes, stay uh, one hour, do all the employees will receive their profile, the resume? Yes, they yes, they will. So every organization that attends this event gets access to the list ahead of time and then are actually provided with the full list once the event concludes. Because as you can imagine, some men and women may join the event literally mid-stride. Two hours into the event, just heard about it or just got my window and they jump in. And then after the event concludes, all the employers are provided with uh, essentially that data set that has your professional profile information and resume. Okay, that's great because listen, um, you need to, uh, it's important you go register, you upload your resume and you register in the event, right? We're gonna talk about with Veronica and just log in and state the time that you need. I know that we talk about, uh, we have a person from Japan, a person from Hawaii. If you have the opportunity just to log in the time that you can, uh, the resume, your credentials, we go to all the employers, either uh, whether you can engage them or not. Okay. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. So I'll be, I'll be back uh, with you, Chris. Now I'm going to invite Veronica Sarantes. Hi, Veronica. Hi, so, Karen Arti. <laughs> so um, guide us through the process. I'm going to put the flyer here. Um, we have a, a flyer and we have uh, two Eventbrite events. Can you guide us through the process, what they can expect? Of course. So I wanted to start by saying that here at Recruit Military, we are really passionate about uh, helping the military community find meaningful employment opportunities. And we have made a commitment to the military spouses. And this is the reason why we're hosting the exclusive uh, military spouse virtual career fair on May 5th. Now, we also want to ensure that all military spouses are fully prepared to have a successful virtual career experience. So what we have done is we have partnered with MSEP, which is the Military Spouse Employment Program, and they have provided a CECO, uh, which is the Spouse Education and Career Opportunities Career Coach, to provide an uh, pre-event training to ensure that all the spouses have the tools and the information they need to have a successful career fair. Uh, so what they're going to be doing is they're going to be discussing different tools and techniques to build a meaningful network uh, connections and to ensure that we they're able to address the employment gaps they have from having to relocate from duty station to duty station. Uh, so what we're going to be making sure is that they have a really good resume that gets noticed by employers. So we're going to be doing this. We're also going to be helping military spouses navigate the virtual platform so they are no questions or no concerns during the day of the event, and they can jump into networking with employers that are looking to hire them. 
Uh, our two pre-event sessions will be on April 21st and 28th. That's Thursday, April 21st and 28th from 1 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, I will post the links to register and I think you're already posting them. Uh, so spouses can register for the pre-event. They only need to attend one of the pre-event sessions. And please understand these are professional career coaches that will be there to answer any questions, any concerns, and just provide the guidance that they need to have a very uh, successful uh, hiring event. Okay, thank you, Veronica. I know the time is up. Oh my goodness, it's just time go fly. <laughs> so thank you very much, Chris, for this opportunity and Veronica, this opportunity that we're giving to the military spouses. And thank you for giving them the uh, disseminate the 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 fact that they can have remote jobs. So it doesn't matter where they are, it doesn't matter they PCS in or not, or they stay in or so they can keep with their, their job and that provides some stability. We're gonna talk on the 27th April with Veronica Sarantes. We're gonna keep with this uh, with this um, conversation about military spouse jobs. And we're gonna talk uh, about a little bit more about the fair. So thank you very much, Chris, for being with us. Thank you, Veronica. Thank you, sir. Okay, bye. So um, I want to, invite you to take action by visiting and subscribing to the Career Fair website. Also, please plan to attend the Eventbrite activity on the 21 and the 28th April. Today, we discuss why spouses are available to employers. You have a lot of skills that employers are looking for, and we want you to know that we recognize you. Also, we went over the registration process and share what to expect during the spouse's career fair. Um, we have time is over. We have to leave. I will leave you with this quote from Steve Jobs. He said, the only way to do great work is to love what you do. If you don't haven't found it, keep looking. Don't settle. Goodbye. This is Lieutenant Colonel Ismael Ortiz signing out. Always, once a soldier, always a soldier. Have a good day. The past program did not constitute an endorsement by the United States Army or the Department of Defense.